Hello guys and welcome to another SCPH replay sent in by the community. This one, this time, gonna be a ZVC. And introducing our players already on the bottom left, we got Oblivion on that red zerg. In the meantime, here on the top right, we are gonna have Sarak instead on the blue hand side. Same race though, gonna be a mirror matchup to watch. We're gonna be on World of Sleepers. And this map, fairly new into the ladder pool. And it does have a number of expansions to go for, for any kind of player. Looking it up right now, you can get rid of the minerals to go here. And always have that natural very, very close, which Serac is already on. Gonna go for that hatch first opening. In the meantime, we did have Oblivion with a pull first instead. Looking to get some queens earlier and looking to get some Zerglings on the way. Now take the note here on World of Sleepers, there are rich Vespine geysers sets on up on bottom right bottom ramp side rather interesting note though it is gonna be only one geyser per base so is it really worth it or is it just a way to min max those workers but still you will see a normal transition into the below ground later on if the zerg feels like that is a defensible position for the time being they're at least coming out here from oblivion looking for the go for the scouts it is a lot of zerglings already gonna be a handful and a finger worth of zergs running into Serax pretty much his field of influence. And see some things fly around along the map. What are these little manta ray bat things? Pretty cute. But not as cute as the opening here from Oblivion. Gonna be in position to go for the hatchery, going for the pokes already. Now the question is, will Serac actually go for the cancel? It is gonna be the hatchery up and about. The drone looking to turn into a spine crawler, not gonna happen. Here we go with the pull! And Oblivion doing some really good damage on the economic front. But at the same time, we are getting queens, we are getting zerglings here from Oblivion. Uh, from Serac rather. Oblivion keeping on with the pressure. Going for the pokes, still the drones being pulled, going for a little bit of a dance. And now another pair of Zerglings come on out. Reinforcers have arrived and drones are quite tanky, especially against these Zerglings. But at the same time, the Zerglings do pack a punch. Now here we go with the mirror matchup. It's going to be six coagulating into position. And at the same time, Oblivion deciding it's time to back on out. He has hampered the economy line. And Oblivion able to have a little bit of a lead. Even able to go ahead in terms of that work account. Now going for the hatch first means you do have creep influence all around the map even more so. And at the same time, you can double pump out those drones, double pump out those zerglings. Just basically more larva to work with. But at the same time, Oblivion fully saturating his main base. Even going for some gas to get some metabolic boost coming our way. And he is on the retreat with the overlords having a little bit of a conference. Oh, there's a lot of zerglings here from Serac. He was forced to build a numerous amount just in case the attack went wary. Anyway, Queens though are in position. Three of them ready to go. Creep tumors not being spread. We are gonna see a little bit of a Mexican standoff here from both of our Zerg players. So the action starting pretty early into the game, and I haven't even been able to talk about the upcoming WPSG Philippine Finals, which I'll be casting alongside Panda User starting tomorrow in terms of when this recording will come out. And on a Sunday as well. There's gonna be the semifinals on that first day and the grand finals on the second. So tune on in to the official pages into that one. But still, we will keep on with our replay content. We always love seeing the StarCraft scene have a little bit of foundation, have a little bit of uh, some exposure. But still, Evo Chambers are set on up both Sark and Oblivion looking to build those walls made out of buildings. But at the same time, the Roach Warrens are out in front, and that is one tech structure that will fall if this becomes a siege. Anyway though, Roaches are on the table for both players. We are gonna get plus one already here for Serac. The Zergling still going for the pokes, gonna be a brawl on the outside. The Queens, man. The Queens are set on up. They are forming that last part of the wall, the hair, those spines, whatever, the tentacles. They're just flowing in the wind, making them look even more beautiful than they are already. Guys, don't, don't judge. Every woman is beautiful. Matriarch, no exception to that. But roaches, no, no, the roaches are freaking but ugly. That's, that's for sure. They're very, very ugly. And they're very big. I think if you see a cockroach as big, you're probably gonna die. Anyway, so, Zerglings on to the scouts. Do you see the queen though? 
going for the long journey to try and chase after the overlord it's gonna be speed versus velocity here the quickest units on the map right now chasing each other for sure this has to be some heart stopping action speaking of heart stopping it seems like oblivion right now looking to stop any kind of expansion pass that natural now think the notes oblivion does see that the minerals are still up and about so this means there is no opening here from the side and we are coming to a point that for witches are being transitioned into. We already have Lair Tech here for our blue Zerg. In the meantime, here on Oblivion side, he is going to go for the Lair, but it is going to be on the natural instead. Now at the same time, Sarak a little ahead in terms of upgrades. He has two evil chambers compared to one. But Oblivion though, ahead in those workers. So getting a little more minerals and gas along the way. You can see the tab right now on the bottom. 1.7. Oh, they're evening up though. But still, more or less, Oblivion a little bit in the lead, maximizing his economy. But still, I feel plus one will go a long way, especially in the Carapace, the Carapace here for our Zerg, that armor, reducing the damage of one, basically mitigating any kind of upgrades. Good cancel though from Serac. That was Oblivion getting this around. The Zerglings have to run away as the Roaches are in position. And these Zerglings are just basically skirmishers. They're only looking for some pokes, not really committing to do heavy damage. In the meantime, again, you see two overlords are having a little bit of a smooch, making out on top of that bush while the manta ray bats are just flying in around. Always good to see a romance in the battlefield as World of Sleeper is a little bit of a sleeper right now. But still, the overseer right now, gonna be going for the scouts. We already have three bases to go here for Oblivion. Now it seems like both sides checking into this roach heavy composition to get the oversight. Gonna allow the roaches to get a little bit of the vision. But he does know that the roaches are there for Oblivion side and Zerg's still going for the fight. Do have one changeling though into the fray. Good vision overall. Gonna be a brawl. The Zerg they start to tank just a little bit. The roaches marching forward. And here we go with Oblivion going for the starter step. Interesting note though, Zerg just keeping his position. Oblivion was the one wasting a little bit of time with the starter step. But more or less, DPS on the same front. Anyway, still, these two overlords having their conference, having their smooch down. And what are we get for both of our players? Finally, Ravage tier 4, Serac. In the meantime, Oblivion still going for those roaches. Corrosive Vial might make a difference, but they're not the best direct hit units. Having that extra ability though, having that extra artillery, always a pleasure to see. Corrosive Vial actually hits Oblivion though. Ahead in that worker count, in that army count. Here we go with the Ravagers, but this might be a time for Serac to actually go for the opening. Here we go with the Pincer attack, though. These roaches are going to get caught on the north-hand side. But at the same time, Serac knows this is very, very dangerous because he doesn't have as much of an army compared to his opponent. The Ravagers right now going for the corrosive battle, not going to hit. And overall, a reset between our two players. So anyway, it was the calm before the storm, and that was just a little bit of a drizzle before anything else else happening. Ravage right now, warping on in again, investing some gas here for side of the blue Zerg. And we are coming to a point where every Zerg player does fall into, whether you're high or low. You go for the Roach Ravager and it basically becomes an all-in, in a sense. As you're not really taking up anything else behind this, you are going to get plus two on range with Parapus as well. And your usual transition is to get some Hydras at the same time. They do have the same upgrades. You can go into some Flyers as well, get... Maybe some Infestors or some Swarm Hosts at the same time. But more or less, you will be stuck on these units till someone decides to make a change. And here we go, the change is happening. Hydralis Den and an Infestation Pit here for Oblivion. This does mean Hive Sec might be unlocked sometime soon. That's the Hydralis Den. Gonna be working together with those upgrades. Gonna be good against the air. Gonna be good against anything lighter as well. The Overlord now coming our way. Overseer here from Sarah going as fast as he can. Go speed race to go. Gonna be spotting out these four bases up and about here for Oblivion. Now take the notes, when you are on this low ground, you would expect to actually get the Vespin Geyser first, as this is the, pretty much the big reason you will get this expansion. But with the amount of mineral stats the Red Zerg needs, it is gonna be some drones now trying to maximize the profits. Still though, one, two, three, four bases should be good enough right now. For Oblivion, he is taking heavy into army. Look at that army supply right now. 127 to 115 workers. Very, very even. But here we go with the brawl by the ramp. Ravager is going to go for the bile. Will it actually connect? No, it doesn't. Both sides missed the mark. But here we go with Sarah. Going to drop on down. Brawl, acid, everything spewing. 
the orange flying on in, landing on the ground. One scouting roach, make that two. Seraph doesn't care. This one, this lone hero, can be brought along with the rest of the pack. I like how Sarek's position right now on that high ground. He is gonna put that one Roach out in front. He was a hero and now he's getting turned into a zero instead. But the Hydralis are behind. Will this actually get some more DPS going our way? Here we go with Oblivion pushing forward. But the high ground is very, very useful here for Sarek. Honestly, Oblivion making a little bit of a mistake there. Just not getting the Overseers in position in time. Maybe one Oversight might make the difference. And speaking of the Oversight, here we go with Sarek again. It's a Dance of Dead. Beautiful Biles now do connect. This one Ravager overextends. Will get taken down. Another Another vile hit won't happen this time. And Sarak with more roaches, with more ravagers coming our way. And here we go again with the brawl. Back and forth action. Sarak deciding back to the high ground we go. But Oblivion this time does have the overseers. But still, he's taking big damage. I think he even hit his own units with the vile. The Hydralis can't get any DPS because they're off creep. They're not as fast as possible. And Sarak in the meantime having the advantage. Good back and forth here from our blue Zerg. But might this might be him overextending his reach as the Queen adding that extra DPS. The Hydra's doing the damage that needs to be done. And this is gonna be the screeches of Zerg units coming our way. Sarak though, reinforcements have arrived. Here we go with some more roaches. Both sides losing so much into this one. And we do get a little bit of a drone pull. So these workers. Not gonna be doing their job, but uh, uh, luckily for them, they won't really die into that one. Still though, the Ramp of Destiny and Serarch getting some really good licks against his opponents. A while ago, it was Oblivion in the lead in terms of that army. And for now, Serarch able to keep on with the pressure. At the same time though, we are gonna get a Lurker Den here for our Blue Zerg. It does mean he does have a Hydra's Den behind this. In the meantime, Blue Spine's coming our way from Oblivion as we go for another Clash of the Titans. Oblivion, Serarch just hitting each other blow for blow, trying to get as much Roach DPS as possible. The Hydra is doing some really good Spine hits at the same time. But they are quite finicky as well as they are the tankiest units. And this makes my to go down. Going all ground right there, right then. Or Oblivion might have actually bit him in the butt. Maybe some spine crawlers, maybe as well as that Spartek might help out in a situation like this. Defender's advantage on that base. Not working out for Oblivion as a high ground Anakin. The high ground is so so good with Sarah going back and forth here and there. Up and down, he goes around. Anyway though, still, he hatcheries on three base here for Mr. Sarah. Make that into a 4. Best mean guys are now might be used up. At the same time, Oblivion has been mitigated to go northward instead. And there is another rich Vespine Geyser there. So still, low ground really providing these purple opportunities for all of our players. And hey, though, aw, poor bro. The Hydralis, Overseer Hunters. Hunter Killers, if you'd say. But ooh, I like this here from Sarah. He is looking to play some Lurkers instead. He does notice his opponent is going full ground, so Hydralis aren't really going to be the best unit into this one. Hydralis are very all around instead, and these Lurkers at the same time, good against light, sure, good against armored as well, apparently. Which is really weird. So the Lurker does bonus damage, I believe, against armored, but with its splash damage, it's good against lights. So it's like they mix the impaler and the lurker together in to multiplayer but this has to be Sarek with some really good positioning going for the circles already the hydralis up on top getting some good dps sure but Sarek still having the control alongside the map now in the meantime this overseer in position oh oblivion one queen will go down it gets caught between a bush and a creep tumor and here we go with the brawl again the lurkers need to be underground to get some any good damage done but the overseers are in position and that is gonna be one lurker going down the gas is so heavy in the investments oblivion going for the books really really well honestly this fight's pretty even between our two players we are gonna get plus three here for oblivion as he has gone into hive tech we are gonna have a lurker then as well so more lurkers coming our way this poor overlord though will get caught oh it doesn't die uh, never mind hydralis is there so a mirror matchup between our two players and this has to be all about the micro right here right now plus three upgrades will be essential at the same time as well as those hydra and roach improvements but here we go though deep tumors spreading on forward going to the north hand side 
The Roaches gonna be bypassing the main composition, but no, they will get caught. Serex still going for the run on by, wants to see what is going on here. We'll be freeing up some supply as well. And one Roach goes down. This might be a second. Roaches are really good units, especially in the early to mid game. But later on into the fight, you wanna have something else. That's what infestors, some swarm hosts, some broodlords, corruptors, mutilists, and even the ultralists are for. It might be time to clean house here for Sarek, but Oblivion though, trying to play this as cheeky as can be. Looking to go for Spellcaster instead, is gonna go for the Viper. And we'll see if this is gonna be anyhow effective into this day and age. Looking at his tech as well, we do have a brawl all the way in the front again by the wall. The evil chamber though does get the plus three in time. That was so, so close for Oblivion. And Sarek, if you only noticed that a little earlier, might have just borne the fruits of the labor from the Red Zerg. But speaking of the Red Zerg, he is going to be caught a little bit out of position. Sarek though has split his army. Going to go for both the base as well as the armed composition. The Lurkers have moved on forward. So Oblivion making a zone of deference and a zone of killing here. But in this time, the Roaches the Ravagers have to go into the back line. We'll go for some folks. We'll get cleaned up though. But still, good damage done by Mr. Sarek. And at the same time, already with a reinforcement cycle. 17 Hydralis and coming. On the other side, Oblivion, losing workers, losing army, and you can really see that he needs something to be done, something big, and the Vipers might be able to do so. Just the disease, just a the cloud there to pretty much turn the range into a melee. At the same time, maybe an abductor to onto a lurker that isn't really rooted yet might be the show. Get some good focus fire, and don't forget that parasitic bomb if ever we see anything in the air. Fly Protect, interesting. We are going to get plus 3 on the Carapacha here and now for Mr. Oblivion. Overseers are there as well. And at the same time, these hatcheries trying to reinforce the lines. The main base though, looking like a barren wasteland though. But here we go again. The Lurkers able to burrow. Serak, not wanting to leave those Lurkers behind. Will unburrow them. We'll be backing on out. And here we go again. Scary composition here for our Blue Zerg. A lot of Hydra, some Roaches. We do get some Lurkers at the same time. And these Hydras are going to be able to go for the Star Step. But I make sure that these things stay alive. 90 HP compared to 100 and plus 145 rather for our Roaches. It all depends now on how Sarek is going to micro this one out. Still though, we are going to get the same kind of treatment from our Blue Zerg. It has turned into the truest mirror matchup of them all. We are going to get some Vipers perhaps from Serark. Going to be doing the same spell casting units. Going to be good for supports even though they don't do damage. He will want to consume some Extractors though to get as much energy as he can. Now why do you usually go on Extractors? It's because these things are the cheapest building. And at the same time, it's like whatever. If you lose them, it's not the biggest deal. Hatchery, if you lose them, you don't get Larva, any kind of tech. Basically, it shuts down that kind of tech. So Extractors, yeah man. Drafters are the sacrificial lamb. What intrigues me is neither side has decided to open things up and mine these mineral fields. Honestly, if I were on a map like this, I would try to be cheeky and bring a drone or two just to open these up. But of course, it does mess up your economy, so it might be a little bit cheesy. Anyway, Sarak already on 200, 200. He has a lot of minerals and gas in the back, and this might be the brawl. Oh, good! I'm jumped though! The Ravager won't get caught and won't get taken down. But still, I feel like- OH NO THE VIPER! Yoink! Oh counter yoink! And here we go with the, the brawl! It is gonna be some spines from below subterranean spines doing a really really good hits with those spikes. But a yoink fiesta between our two players. Oh, the low ground lurker is getting some really good licks actually. And at the same time- oh, another yoink! Viper will get caught. This is pretty funny. They're playing in the peninsula in the middle. Lurkers though, always best. And I was gonna say, Oblivion is on that plus 3, sure. He has that advantage in a direct brawl. But at the same time, Sarek high in minerals and pretty much good on gas. High on supply as well. But army count right now for Oblivion. Gonna be evening up against his opponents. So right now, Oblivion still in good spots. But keep an eye out those minerals and gas later on. That will make a big, big difference on the second wave. The Zerg Swarm... Always wants to reinforce their losses immediately. Turn those larvae in to units instead and just rally them in. Keep the pressure, keep the fight alive. Dublin has to figure things out. 
does even know how much minerals Tarek has in the bank. It might be a big, big component of his defeat later on. Or will he be able to just win it out with his army supply? So yeah, army focus. 200, 200 basically for both sides. But Oblivion with the advantage not only on that plus 3. But will have the advantage of that extra army supply as well. But he is running out of time to still keep on up with those upgrades. Again, a scouting force here from Sarek. Just trying to go for the economic hits. But this time, the backline will be protected. Yoink again. The Viper will catch out to have one tanky unit. The poor Lurker will get caught. That will be another takedown there and then. Oh, at the same time, though, Pincer attack. This time onto that low ground base. And Oblivion not splitting up his army. He does have more of these units. And he can always just split up his army and defend as much as possible. But obviously, he wants to have that big death ball. But it did allow the opportunity for Sarek to take care of another base. So pretty much guys, this is why the rich just get richer. The poverty gap, the economic alliance, those kind of things. This day and age. Because with those extra resources, Sarah can afford to lose. In the meantime, Oblivion fighting a uphill battle. Here we go again. Another skirmish between our two players. The big army versus the small component. Here we go with the Yoink. A move to spot at that Viper. And you see how fast that one dies. But anyway, oh, the extractor already running out of gas. That's pretty interesting. It was so quick to see this extractor actually run up out of gas in the first place. But it is what it is. Sarek maximizing his gains from that one. Already has another base ready to go. But this might be the beginning of the end for one of her players. Because these armies are at a critical mass. Here we go again with the brawl. The lurker is going to go on to the offensive on the ground. Here we go with the yoinks onto those flyers. And, the, and we do get the hydralis to clean those up. But at the same time, another set of yoinks here and now from our red player. But we do get a little bit of the cloud action below Sarak. Backing on now, good yoinks from Oblivion. And he's gonna try to go for the push. Might be not to be the best opening though, as the rock gonna provide cover here for Serac. And Oblivion losing so much there! That is gonna be him walking into that one and suffering the consequences. MVP Rock protects the lurkers, splits up the army as well. With the rock in the way Oblivion didn't get to maximize his DPS, especially the fact that the creep, the creep man isn't spread here. Like and ZVZ creep spread isn't really the biggest deal since both of you guys can use it. But in situations like this, situations wherein you need that extra movement speed to get in position, that was so painful. And Sark playing this so, so well. This is the end of his creep. And he's had the creep advantage compared to his opponents. Sometimes you just want to connect with your pal, with your opponents. Just keep those lines in check. But anyway, Oblivion's still in his fights. So got to reinforce his economy by mining on up. No cheeky hits there from Sarek. A lot of Hydras here and now. At the same time though, Spine... Well, okay, Spine Crawlers later on to the game. Extra DPS doesn't hurt. He does have a lot of minerals as well. It doesn't cost any supplies, so it's pretty much free DPS basically. But still, might need to pay attention into the upcoming fronts as this is going to be big army here from Oblivion. Sarek in the meantime, hanging on back. Trying to defend this low ground base that doesn't give him gas anymore. But still, no man left behind. Here we go with the Lurker is going to be able to borrow on in. We get the cloud action. Yoinks are abound with those abducts. The Vipers try to fly on away. Here we go with another New York and Oblivion just going oh, all the way in so far. But he does lose a lot of Hydras again. Thanks to those Lurkers. Extra DPS just walking into that one. And the Overseers again not in position for our Red Zerg. Another reinforcement cycle for our two players. But Oblivion is just hanging himself by the, the edge of the rope right here right now oh no oh no don't do this man we're trying to go for the lurkers but it's not gonna happen the hydras are going down so so quickly oblivion stepping on a minefield that that is gonna be so so painful against our red zerg it's time to fight. It's time to go. Oh, Oblivion tried to go for the run on by. Cheeky hit onto the drone line. Will it be enough? This one goes down. The other will fall. The pair of lurkers. A pair of idiots, apparently. But anyway, to the forefront we go. Sarek pushing forward. Knows this might be the killing blow because he just able to finish off so many of those hydra lists. Oblivion losing so much. Anyway, lurkers on behind. We get another cloud to just pretty much mitigate that range factor. But still, the Lurkers going for the hits, and that is going to be GG called. 
Sarah taking the victory. Oblivion keeping things up, but just doesn't have the economy to keep on fighting like this. Look at that, it's production, not even the best anymore. And Sarek with the W, Oblivion handing the victory to him by stepping into the Lurker's range. And that was a good one, really good back and forth between our two players. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully you're able to tune in to BESG.